start with an empty project here. I'll add in a kinematic body and then collision shape as a child. We'll set a capsule shape to it and then we're going to rotate it because they have it horizontal by default. Oops. Rotate it by 90 on the X axis. And then let's see, we need to add in a ray cast, add in a animation player, add in a canvas layer, and then as a child to that, we'll add in a control and also texture rect, and then to the child, to the control, add a sprite, just a regular sprite. Now for the ray cast, enable it, set the cast to, to 0, 0, negative 2000. I believe negative on the Z axis is considered forward in Godot. And then for the control here, set the anchor to be 0.5 on the left and one on the top. And then that'll set the other ones correctly. And then set all the margins to zero. <coughs> and that'll center it and move it to the bottom of the screen. And then for the texture rect, I'm going to center it for all of them and clear out the margin. And let's see, drag in the image assets here. So for the texture rect, I'm going to put in the crosshair image and then it's not centered yet. Um, what I need to do is on margin, put left negative 16, which is half the size of the texture, and then top negative 16, so now it's centered. So if I go to the sprite here, I'm going to add the FPS shooter, the gun sprites here. Now here's something cool I found. With animation, you can see vertical frames has one, but horizontal it has four, so now I can just do that and cycle between frames with this here. It's pretty cool. Um, so now I need to move this so it's at the bottom of the screen. So half of this, I believe, is 256. Let me see. I move it up. 256. So I'm going to move it negative 256 so it's right aligned with the bottom of the screen and then I'm going to move it to the right a little ways that seems good it's about 200 there so you can just move mode drag things hold shift to drag along one axis control Z to undo that um, so now animation I'm going to create a shoot animation here I'm going to set the steps to 0.15 and the length will be 0.6. Now if I go down to the sprite here, I can set the animation itself. So set the first frame. I want it to, let's zoom in here, scroll wheel, hold control of the scroll wheel. So I want the first frame to be 1. So I just create a keyframe there. And then once I do that, it should automatically move me forward for, and then the last one, I want it to be zero, so it starts over again. Oh, and you have to click the key. So now if I click start, I don't want to loop this one, I want it to stop at the end. So you'll see that it plays through the shoot animation and then stops. So I can use that to track whether or not we can shoot. And let's see, go back to the player here. And oh, I need to add a camera, of course. So add this as a node and set current on it. I'm gonna rename this player. And then save this scene. And let's add our script. So for our constants, our move speed, we're going to move at 4 units per second. A unit in 3D is about a meter, you can think of it. Mouse sensitivity, that controls just how much your mouse affects things. Uh, animation player, reference, and reference the Raycaster. Then in ready, I'm going to 
set the mouse mode to captured so it's invisible and stuck on the center of the screen, which is kind of what you want for an FPS. And then wait one frame and then call set player on all the enemies. So this is just code from my top down shooter from before. Um, input, get if we move the mouse, get how much we moved it on the horizontal, multiply that times the mouse sensitivity and then subtract that from the y-axis of our rotation. We're using degrees instead of radians because you can get a little more control that way. Then in process, since we're locking the mouse center of the screen, I want an easy way to exit the game. So I just I have an exit button that quits and a restart button that restarts the scene also. So next for input, we're gonna have move 3D move vector if we move forward. We're going to subtract from Z backwards, Z, and left and right is on X. Let's add in these buttons real quick. Go to input map here. Move forwards, move backwards, move left, move right, shoot, exit, and restart. And W for forwards, S for backwards, A for left, D for right, and mouse button, left button for shoot, escape for exit, and R for restart. And now let's do our actual movement code here. So normalize the move vector so we don't move faster diagonally, and then rotate it along the y-axis by our current rotation, and then move at move speed per second. And then we check if we press to shoot and the animation player isn't playing anything, then call play shoot or animation and then see if there's a collider that the Baycast is hitting. And if it has a kill method, call kill. And then finally come down here and have our own kill method that just restarts the scene. That's what restart uses. Save and let's make a new scene. So for this one, we can do kinematic body, collision shape, and raycast, and animation player. And then we're going to add in a sprite 3D. So the collision shape will do another capsule and rotate that again, 90 on the x-axis. Set the raycast to enabled, don't worry about cast to. And then Sprite 3D, drag on the monster sprites here. Animation is two vertical frames, five on the horizontal. And then animation player, let's create a walk animation. And set the steps there and the length is going to be 0.6. And then let's go to the sprite here, add the first frame, create that. Oh, so you go back to zero, let's see, you set frame zero. It's kind of weird on the first one. So add the crew for the first one. Now it moves properly. Three and four. So by enable looping there, hit play. You can see it does the run animation there. And now I want to create a die animation here. Same amount of steps. And then the length is 0.75. And I don't want to loop this. Let's go. I believe it's five is the first one. Yeah, five is the first one, so I'm gonna create that track and then move along here. There we go. So if I click to start from the beginning, you can see it plays the die animation. Pretty good. Now we need to, in Sprite 3D, go down to geometry here, add a new spatial material, and let's go to that. I'm gonna go to flags transparent and unshaded, set those to true. And then we need to go to, let's see, I forgot what this one is, parameters and billboard mode, set it to Y billboard. So now the sprite will face the camera at all times. And now we'll go, let's name this zombie also, then add a script to it. And we'll move at 
three units per second, so a little slower than the player. Have references to a raycast and animation player. Have variables for the player and another one tracking if it's dead or not. Then at the start, ready, we'll play a walk animation and then add it to the group zombies. So over here you see you're waiting till all the zombies get added to the group before you call the set player method. And let's just add the set player method real quick at the end. So, and then we go into physics process. So just check if we're dead, don't do anything. If the player isn't set, don't do anything. Now we're going to get a vector pointing to the player. So in 3D, use translation instead of position. So just get a vector uh, pointing to the player here and then normalize that and then set our raycast cast to to be that vector a little bit longer so it's always pointing right at the player and then we just move along that vector at our move speed per second and then we just check if that raycast is colliding get the collider for the raycast and just see if it's not null and if it's the player and call the kill method if it's the player then our own kill method set dead to true disable or collision and play the animation die so save this scene zombie create one more scene spatial node here called world and then just put an instance of the player here and then instance zombie and then i can zoom out a little here so if I grab this little green box here, I can move it horizontally, which is what I want. And I can also, if you go up here, it shows you, I can go to top view, or I can just hit seven on my keypad, and then just move this around. Duplicate with control D. So there, I duplicated a bunch of them. The player's there. I should, you can put like something as a placeholder, 3D object or something for the player. So you can see it better and just save this scene. Let's click play. Select our main scene to be world. And then press R to restart. If they touch me, the game restarts. And if I hit escape, the game closes. Now, some, some issue I've been noticing is I have a high DPI monitor, and that um, setting, ignore the sirens outside. Um, if you have a high DPI monitor and you're setting your input mouse mode to captured, it's, gonna, it's not going to play nice with a mouse, um, with mouse movement. Like, I have to use my touchpad right now to get this movement. If I reset editor settings, it works. But right now it's kind of weird. I have to use the touchpad. So what you can do for that is if you go in the editor, editor settings, if you have the same issue that I do, go in DPI mode. I prefer to use mid DPI, but what I do is I'll set it to low DPI. Then I'll close the editor, reload it, set it back to mid DPI, close it, reload it, and then it works. So if you run into that issue, that's what you can do to fix it.